Okay, so we we'll start the session there. I was waiting for Julian Sarger to delay, but I'd say he'll, he'll be as fast as soon as he can. Um, so Rob is going to go through a few uh, of uh, his case studies. Uh, in, you know, Rob has been using VR for, uh, for several years now as part of um, predominantly the, the psychology program. Um, so um, uh, Rob will explain his experiences. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, so the, the Masters in Cyber Psychology program has a VR module. So it's a, I can tell you a bit about it in a while, but also the undergrads have gotten very interested in it. So they're very interested in it. You can imagine psychologists are interested in um, empathy and putting yourself in someone else's shoes and what's that feel like. So they, they every year, there's one or two who do their major research projects and they use VR. Um, there was one last year who was looking at the selection of avatars and sexuality, which is really cool. One. Uh, one did one on um, anxiety. Do you say there's a there was a VR experience where you're sitting opposite someone who's kind of keeps staring at you, and it feels kind of weird. Uh, it's called coffee without words, and uh, he used that um, to and he got to answer in questionnaires and looking at, at anxiety and stuff like that. Uh, there was another one looked at um, willingness to buy things. So they showed people it was a Bluetooth speaker that the advertising spread, and then they made a VR world where you could pick up the Bluetooth speaker and listen to music on it, um, and just to compare those two things. So there's one uh, last year, the, the one main one I'm going to show you now, which was uh, as another psychology student who wanted to compare. So that was real useful for um, what you're doing, what we're doing is uh, she compared an online class using Blackboard or Teams to a virtual reality class, one that was running in VR, so to compare the two of them. So um, our work is done. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, when she started on it, right, we, were, we were just talking about if you're comparing situation like this, we're all in the same room, to an online situation. And we we're just saying how it's doing something like, um, in this example, say, going to an art gallery, right? That would be experience rich, right? Because you and all of you here today, you've made travel to be here, um, you know, new place, all of those things. It's a really, really powerful, rich experience. And it also is very memorable, I was saying, you know, uh, you're going to remember a lot more than if this was a webinar or something like that. It, the difference would be, I and mean, looking at looking at that, then it was kind of um, it automatically jumped there. Um, presence and immersion. So when when you're somewhere like this, you're with people who are all on the same page and all think about the same things, and the feeling of presence as well. Because you know, you know. You know when you're on a webinar, it's very easy to turn off your uh, camera and go make a cup of tea, right? <laughs> and, uh, it's also very easy to zone out. I do anyway, right? <laughs> when, when you get lots of information thrown at you, you're, you're not feeling present, you're kind of part of it, but you're also at home or you're somewhere else. So um, this idea of immersion and presence kind of came out from that. And we're just, just also saying how, like, so the going to the gallery, the real experience is experience rich, but it's data poor. Because there's, um, that's the National Art Gallery here. There's a Caravaggio painting, and it's just got a little box beside it with his name and the date. Right? That's all the information about that painting that's there, right? Whereas if you look at, say, browsing on a, on a browser, it's experience data rich, right? Because you can find out everything about Caravaggio and you can find podcasts and books and everything you could possibly need as deep as you want. So it's very data rich, but it's kind of experience for as in sitting there scrolling up. You're not really going to remember that. You're going to remember your visit to a gallery, but you're not really going to remember that scrolling up and down the web page, right? So 
looking at how, how can you kind of bring those two things together. So turn kind of a learning experience into an, uh, an experience where you feel present, and you feel immersed. So I was delighted last year when this student, Andrea, they, they do a major research project at the end of the year, and she suggested exactly this, to, to have a look at this. So that's the title of her thesis. So present and engagements in online learning comparing desktop-based to virtual reality. So um, who, so we had 53 participants. So we had some did a lesson online, just like a regular class using Teams or Zoom, and then another class in VR. So I, I helped with the VR bit, so I ran a VR class. Um, and we used the, the Master in Cyber Psychology students for the participants. So there was, was 16 of them, and they actually have a module, so called VR, which I was teaching, so it all worked out good. Um, and it's, these are part-time students, so they're in on Saturdays, but it's been, it was all online. They've never actually met each other in real life, right? They've all been using teams uh, for the whole year. So what the headsets here, the old guy name use headsets? Um, some of them had them. So we had, a few of them actually had, had them um, themselves, and I was able to lend out to and there was one guy who actually works in works for Meta, okay. and uh, yeah, and he works in in this area, so he was able to help us out as well. So and um, why? So kind of to the who, what, why uh, technology here. So um, the the module was yours. So I suppose, I suppose it brings up the question of when is it appropriate to use? Because I was kind of thinking like that, you know. You, you want to have a good reason to run the class in your compared to running the class in um, Teams, right? What's the advantage? So th this class was about VR and it was about the metaverse. So the subject matter was suitable. And um, they were learning about the metaverse in the metaverse. That was kind of meta, right? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we wanted to try the technology. Uh, we wanted to help Andrea with her project. And we wanted to test the viability of having a class in VR. And then, because the class was about the metaverse, they could experience the metaverse. And then also wanted to try out some different environments because there is you got different options of where to run the class. And then the fun factor was a big one as well. Um, I, like it's quite draining. Like they, they're there from 10 to 3 on Saturdays watching screen, right? It can be very draining and hard to concentrate. So one I think still to try something different. So does the application use affect presence and engagement was the research question. So um, there's two questionnaires there. So like our scale, uh, the psychology uh, lecturers and students use these all the time for measuring different things. So she's looking at presence and engagement. So she did a literature review, I only put, pulled out like two bits of quotes that turned out to be um, relevant to what we we're doing. So this one is from Slater, so it's kind of not 2003's old for this research. But he was just talking about um, when, you're, when you're learning a skill from a first person perspective, it allows them to do similar behavior and reactions to the real world. And it's subconscious then, and this idea of being there doing something um, between the brain and the nervous system is an experience of presence. And so you feel a presence, which is one of the things it's missing when you're scrolling um, up and down in Google in Google search. Uh, this is another one that was interesting. Um, so being in the classroom is a rare moment the students will experience unlikely. So like uh, you know the experience is where you can go this would be you know, it'd be great to go visit the uh, pyramids or go into um, some of the tombs or, you know, there's all these things you'd like to do, but time and the laws of physics, time and space and money might be um, prohibitive. Then you've got our unethical. By unethical just means something that might be a bit dangerous, right? So 
you know, it might be good to go to the top of the mountain or a cliff or something, but maybe it might be not, or you know, use heavy machinery or something like that. It might be a bit uh, due to risk or danger, right? It'll be like the current. So you can kind of recreate things that mightn't be practical in real life. So there is a good one where you can take a car or engine, you can take it apart, put it back together again. Good exercise if you're learning about cars, but you need 20 of them with 20 people doing that all at the same time. Wouldn't be practical. So this allows me to try things out at least. Is this literature review available? And um, yeah, well, I'll, sh I'll sh share the paper with you. I'd be really interested because I'm thinking because there's not many people doing this research. And I think if we can add this to our. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you know, to start. Yeah. Yeah. yeah start place. Place. Mm -hmm. uh, so the walk then was the platform. So there's loads of different platforms. Uh, so I think they do, it, it's like virtual learning environments. They often do similar things, you know. But it just happened a couple of weeks before this. Uh, we're on Gage. I know you used Engage as well. Yeah. So, and they uh, they're based in Gory. Here and um, so they did a demo with us. So kind of just because they did that demo, then it ended up using it. Um, it's also available. So it's on the headset, the laptop, tablet. You can do it with Macs and the phones. It's accessible, so you don't want to uh, leave anyone out if you can't get a headset. It's easy to access, but uh, it's got this really nice recording feature to try that, right? So you can record. A live the situation, the live lecture. So that makes it asynchronous, and you'd be able to go back to it afterwards later on. And so that, that was the main reason we went with that one. But there's loads of other ones. And it requires the full VR, does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In yeah. like 3D, and you can play it back. Yeah, yeah. You can walk around yourself. Yeah. You can, yeah, you can watch yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's very, very weird. Uh, so the how then, um, so yeah, obviously you've got to give them a lot of advance notice. So I, was tell, I told them like weeks beforehand. Told them to download it and have a go, but uh, one or two. <laughs> uh, encourage them to make their own avatars, etc. Then you got to, uh, with um, Engage, you got to upload your PowerPoint and videos, whatever you're using. Then it's easy enough though, you create it on Engage. So then they go in and there's a, a window and it just says sessions and you can put a password on it and then just them can get in. But, um, but this is a free one meeting and I think it's, it's not expensive. It's really expensive to get the full number and we, we can do that. So make your avatar, uh, go in, click on it. So it's a partnership possibly. I've been in touch with them. They're, they were bought by another multinational. Mm -hmm. they, they were a small kind of company. They, they got some big funding. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, so, so, we so, we've been, so we've been using Engage since it started, basically. Yeah. And I've got uh, one of the main contacts here actually was stuck in the States because uh, they've got quite a big US yeah. um, presence as well. Um, yeah, so there's always that possibility. So I'm thinking, again, about Constitution, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. great to get in touch with them. Um, so, they Stanford taught a module all in New York recently. Um, so, what we did then, like, so you've got to decide where what room you're going to use. Like, I didn't want to use a lecture room because that was kind of what we used our classroom to so try something else. But then, also, if you don't want to be in a bar or um, Oh, yeah. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> but you don't want to be like you know somewhere um, you know, on Mars or something like that because that'd be like too distracting. So I kind of went for the um, boardroom one, right? So it's kind of in the middle. But when the lecture was finished, then we went to Mars and did, 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 did a lot of fun things. Um, so you start up there, and then you can you get a, like a tablet, and you can put your PowerPoint on the screen, and you can do a presentation like you, like you would normally. Uh, so we did, that was about 20 minutes, I'd say, in, the, in that bit. And then we decided to play a bit uh, to try out the different um, 
scenes, right? So there was one, it's like a kind of fire. You've probably seen these at uh, the Mars one, right? Um, but that's, that, that's a model and it's animated as well. You can click on it and it'll take a rock sample and show you how it does it and all that. Um, one thing that really stood out to me was did these people, this class, I've, I've never met them in real life either. I talked to them on, on um, Teams, you know? And it's funny, you get to know everyone's personality, the messers and stuff, kind of, oh, that came out. So I thought it was a really, like we were talking about the richness environment. Uh, like there's one person there who hardly said a word and then turned out to be really funny. Cracker jokes. And on the Mars one, I like the idea of like, get people getting um, curious and exploring. One person kind of started walking off in the distance, sort of stopped walking off. She said, I want to see what's behind these mountains. I went off like, so that was kind of funny that um, someone in this area wanted to go off and uh, explore a bit. Uh, then we tried the, the video. So that's the Aurora Boyalis, and it's a video. And that one, everyone was like looking up. It was funny because you see all the avatars looking up, right? And that was really, really nice. Like it was snowy. And so you can get that 360 video. And then the other one there is Avery, which is uh, in Wiltshire. It's a um, Neolithic place. So it's, it's kind of like you can go to on a field trip without having to uh, get a bus and do all those things. Uh, so kind of exploring around there. And then um, at the end, then we went back to the other one and tried the playback thing. So then it was able to play back the lecture. So I was able to see myself giving the lecture, giving like 30 minutes earlier, right? which I think is really good if you were like teacher training or something, you know. Um, but an interesting thing about it is how it's, uh, it makes it asynchronous. So some of you miss the class, they could take the class anyway, even if they, if they weren't available at that time. So um, there are given some questions then. So um, a good few of the ones were about the headset and feeling heavy and blurry and things like that. But like, you know, they're going to get lighter enough, better. Pretty quick, and a few people I think didn't put them on properly or didn't, you know, just taking a while to show them how to put it on properly and stuff would probably solve that problem. And one nice one here. Um, so the novelty as well, I think, is a big thing. I, I'd be curious to know if it was every week how it would change. I'd say it would, you know, because the first time everyone thought, well, there's it it a lot of tournaments, there's a novelty factor there. Uh, so it would be interesting to know over a longer period of time. I look at to control my movements in space, it's fun looking around my gaze, and then use my hands to interact. This one said it was a fun experience. So the um, questionnaires then, so with the, the presence, the virtual is up a good bit, All right? So it's a lot higher compared to the uh, 2D video one. So that was kind of what we were expecting. And the same with engagements. And I think I found as well, there's a lot more questions, right? There was a lot more interaction and a lot more people giving examples of things they had done, right? So I definitely found it a lot more um, interactive. You know that when you're, you're teaching online and, and you think you're talking to yourself sometimes, right? <laughs> that, like there's nowhere to hide when your avatar is there, you know, so I suppose it makes people uh, a lot more present, a lot more immersed. So um, the platform wise then, so that engage yours was probably the top of the range at the moment, seems to be, but there's, there's a lot of them, say, stick, stick with one. Be aware of the novelty factor, right, it is going to be that, um, and I recommend you can maybe get them to meet each other in your casually before the class, do something like that. Because there is a bit of messing around with where are my hands, what am I clicking, things like that, right? The same with any class. The weight, the weight and the headband sway, that came back is what's one thing they were talking about. It was 45 minutes, I, I thought it would be less than that, but like, um, the time went really quickly actually. But it, it was, 
I'd say that that's going to change with the technology. Allow for some fun time. We did, we did give them a bit of time to, to play with models. So they were important models and things like that. And it did score better in engagement and presence. Okay, so it scored well with that. Now, um, the other things that we did was um, VR related. And I think these might be some useful use cases. So one was there's a UX interaction design course here, and they had a, a module in VR. And what we did is we got them to, um, to make a little postcard from Dublin. So they, they went out with InstaPro 360 cameras, and they went to a couple of uh, tourist places in Dublin. And their, the assignment was they had to capture that place. So these are design students. And uh, so we got seven different, very many, some of the places people were visiting here in Europe visiting Dublin and they took the photos and then they made panels, like information panels. And the, ni the nicest one actually is this one, Marsh's Library. I'll just jump ahead a little bit. This is Marsh's Library, which is beside St. Patrick's Cathedral. And it's a, a really old library where uh, Jonathan Swift used to study and write and wrote. Um, Gulliver's Travels. So the, the photos kind of surprisingly nice. They're not that good in the headset because the resolution isn't, isn't good when you record it, it looks better. So that's where I used to sit and write. So it's an old um, library there. This is video from in the headset. And there's this, just you're able to like teleport around to different places. So we're thinking of other use cases for that as well, like a, a virtual tour, a virtual open day, um, I, was, I heard an article or an interview with a guy from Accenture, and they onboard new employees with a headset. Now, right, they, they get them to see and do their um, introduction. That's uh, Henrietta Street, which is a tenement building. So it's just like how people work about 100 years ago, a typical uh, tenement house where people really lived. So we said to put in some information there. And you can kind of go around. I got that. It's on this headset here if you want to have a go. But also, I was thinking, like, what about um, an exhibition or a sculpture or capturing? You know, there's lots, lots of arts that um, doesn't really work that well in 2D. Maybe it could be something that could be used there. Um, How do they make it? Is it Unity? Yeah, so they, they make their own. So they make them in Unity separately. So there's seven different ones. So I just got them all and put them into one thing so you could jump around between them. So uh, you use one of those and you tool. Yeah, yeah. And it, see, it's, it's kind of like the, the default buttons, right? Yeah. The, What's it called again? The app, the, the, the menu system you use? Oh, the, it's just putting a canvas. Uh, it's, it's, it's one of the built-in things in Unity. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's the main of jail. That, that, those pictures look really nice in the headset. And it's funny, you get the feeling of um, space as well. It's like large spaces and small spaces. So there, there was just a bit of code that would change the skybox. And then you got the, the panels with the information on them. So I was thinking that there might be lots of different possible use cases for that. Um, so there's a Davy Burns, which um, it's a poll, but it's mentioned in Joyce's Ulysses. So you can kind of see the inside. So that was one of them. Um, <laughs> it's on. It's on the. Oh, do you want to see the mirror? 
Yeah. <laughs> Save me a trip, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, been now, right? So. <laughs> but I think it's not like that's just it. The first point was, you know, if you turn something into an experience, like if you're reading about these places compared to, and actually, yeah. A lot of the research shows that people say afterwards they talk as if they really were there. So they're like, I was in yeah. the main jail and I was in that place. So I suppose it makes it a lot stickier. Um, What's nice as well brain. is that you have the labels of all the different parts of St. Patrick's Cathedral. Because when you're literally in the cathedral, you don't know what part of the cathedral yeah. you're in. You're just like, oh, I'm over yeah. here. Yeah. And then if, you, if you've gone lost from your friend and you're texting each other, like, I'm, I'm beside the the really big Jesus instead of the medium <laughs> Jesus. Whereas this is, it hasn't worked. I didn't know that was called the ladies' chapel. Uh, I'm sure there's a sign in that space somewhere, but it's so small and it's a huge cathedral that you never know. Well, we, we had a um, conversation on yesterday around um, communication with students and BLEs and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, I think this is where this, you know, because, you know, in, uh, I just made my bet, you know, we don't communicate very well with when we're physically in space together. You know, we don't yeah. have like what's happening today on the wall. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. yeah like it's like pointed stuff like that came. So it's all on the BLE. So, yeah. Well, I don't know if it's just BLE, so I don't yeah. know. But if it was here, I'll, I'll just read it while I'm listening to that and see what we're going to be doing somewhere. What's happening next week? So, so, so that, yeah. that in from data rich and experience together. Um, and in VR, obviously, yeah, you can like that. You, yeah, you can add in and augment all this stuff to it. So that's yeah, quite powerful. Um, this is another project which is with Alto University. So, and myself and a colleague were over in Helsinki, and we did this. Work, they do these workshops. Uh, they have a week workshop, and students sign up to whichever one they want. So these were design students. And um, the, the brief was that we picked the team piece. <laughs> and there, that was like uh, in um, February, it was just before the invasion happened actually, two days before. But they, the peak, they, have, they could only use text. So the, my colleague who's with me, uh, Hillary, is big into uh, fonts and text. So we said, can you make um, an experience only using words? Right. So we let them make walls or with no models and the text, they can only use text. So uh, there, there's a, there was five, there's five examples here. But, um, so this one was like, it's really dark, but they made a poem and you, you go through, you walk through the poem. And uh, there's a nice one here. Yeah, you kind of go around the corner there and the, the words of the poem are like branches coming up. And then you're kind of walking through it, and it's he's reading the poem at the same time. So you can, I mean, it's going through really fast there, but you get the idea. And then this, we used um, this old space, which I thought worked out really well because you can make one, it's like a website, you, you make one room that's got these teleporters in it, and you can teleport to each student's project. So, like, Links like they are, well, they are hyperlinks. So, um, they make a few of them. You know, we have loads of issues with all space for the students around the Microsoft account. No? Login, all space. You, you, can, you can log in with your, yeah, your Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, but that it, it, it was, how long ago did you do this? Was it three, six months ago? Oh, yeah. You didn't have Microsoft issues? No. Login issues? You worry me now, it's happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 yeah. And it also means that you have more than one person in the same place at the same time, which is cool as well. 
These ones, they're, they're people's food. Um, um, see, there's a carrot. You've got this like, big spinning carrot. So that, that's like made out of um, text. Again, it's the right. Do you know, you know, um, Laurie Anderson's work? No. Um, so the amazing um, uh, musician visual artist. Um, she's done a uh, lecture series, like a written lecture series, and this piece of the forest where it is, um, like space in VR, for her work, it's all work in the space of the city, so it's all kind of things that you can resonate. Well, we should have all these versions. Um, because yeah. yeah. well, we've done this a couple of years, and one year, because we, we were using bones at one stage, and just putting them in there. But, uh, yeah, we're talking about that one one group did a bit about the jungle book and the trees were all words from the book and the elephants was made out of the letters. And there was one we, it ended up being too big to put in all space because it was but they um, they made this like island and the grass was M's and the bees there was a letter B and was sideways and it was yellow like a B and they made little rabbits and they just did it added putting letters together at different and they made trees with X and all this kind of stuff. It was, it was really cool, but it nearly killed my laptop because it has so many polygons. That <laughs> it was there was very um, heavy on it, and it was too big to, to put up on um, all space. Yeah. I think I'll just show you one more. This is my favorite one. I think which was really kind of simple, but. It turned out really nice. Um, you just got all these letters and just put them all slightly bigger behind each other. And then there's lights in them. So as you go closer, the lights come on. And you can walk through them like a tunnel. So he calls them harmony. And you get this kind of strange feeling of going through a tunnel. So that, that's pretty cool. And still made of tape. Uh, just oh, it's it. only text, yeah, so they're only allowed just text. That is cool. <laughs> so we're going back there um, next February, actually. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> over there. Um, I just one more, which you might be interested for you, which is um, I met this guy who's an architect, and I was like, you make 3D models, don't you? And he's like, yeah, he goes, give us, well, give us a 3D model, you know? And um, this is a hotel. He, he said, I suspect in every room, right? right? This is like the design that they, they're pitching for a hotel in Westport. So um, it was made in SketchUp, but it was to, like imported into Unity and tied it up a bit. Like there's lots of little gaps, there's walls on one side and things like that, but like, was ready to get it to the stage where you know you could go in there and walk around, and uh, he's going to use it then because he's pitching to build this, so he would allow the clients to go and have a walk around the hotel before it's built, which sounds pretty cool. And, like you can see, um, when you go to the balcony here, you can see the views, and you get that feeling of scale and all that that you wouldn't get just looking at a model. So how is architecture good for small? Yeah. Yeah, because we we actually did we, we did this for the architects that built the, the place we're going to have our multiplier event, <laughs> and we um, when we were doing a public consultation, we asked for the model of the architect and put it in. Oh, you got to the public to basically look at the building in VR, and the architects were just like, "Why? Never seen it." Like, why are you not? Know, this is like no yeah. standard for your industry. Yeah, I think. But what was really weird was that now the building's built, was going and seeing the building in real life, and it was so odd. It's like oh, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that big pillar. Um, but the thing that was really weird was it looked a lot smaller in real life. <laughs> right. It's like a lot more claustrophobic. Compared to the area, so I guess there was no furniture. Yeah, so uh, this one, yeah, you know, it was furniture, let's take it out because it was um, the, the graphics card was starting to burn and there were so many uh, polygons in it. Like, but um, I suppose it's nice to have, like this 
could use a lot of work on the lighting. So that yeah, I was going to ask, can you change the lighting? You can, yeah. Because so it is. You can see, like, evening time. Is the yeah. building still nice? Yeah, you can see what the, as the sun goes. Oh, and the right. shadows then, and how that could impact the surrounding area. What your, what's your, the north is facing the garden that everyone wants, that kind of thing. Um, so that, I suppose there's lots of use cases that, that could be used for. Um, and then just the. Uh, this was the class that we did. Kind of in the. Lecture's point of view. Just um, long term on the audio, but there was a lot of mm -hmm. and stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's, there's, <laughs> there's a person running away in the distance. It's like you can't do that when you're in um, a regular class. <laughs> was, I, was everyone in that sex, or did some people off? There was one or two who were using, because with Engage, you can, you can download and Use it. Laptop, yeah. But that, that's the animation I've shown taking a sample. So like, imagine that, like if you're doing there's Andrea. Andrea there. She's the one who uh who goes away. <laughs> um, but the the novelty thing is uh, is interesting. I think you've got to get that and you says, look at this, we went a bit crazy here with the models, right? because mm -hmm. um, you can let people play for a little bit as well. So that, like, that's a, just a big room. And I showed them how to bring the models. The next thing there was dinosaurs and helicopters and everything like all over the place. Because um, what we found was, yeah, it, it, yeah, you you can go in VR and have the full VR experience. But if you're working in this lot, you don't want to be VR all the time. You're yeah. So you're on the desktop. So you know, when we were doing projects in here, we were on the desktop. Lessons. Uh, yeah, then to be on what you need to do. So, yeah. Yeah, we do like an event. So, and I think that's important to get over is that, you know, doing VR doesn't mean you have to be in VR in your, in your headset all the time. Yeah. Or for every experience. I think that in a way that's what a lot of people are thinking that they have to. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, if you can communicate that from the beginning. I think it makes some things harder. There was one guy inside here at the Scottish Masters who we, I showed him this thing, it was like a, a recording studio for mixing music. And he was saying, you know, my laptop, I wouldn't, why would I put on a headset and be doing this when I use um, my laptop, you know? So yeah, like sometimes it doesn't make sense. I suppose it's a case of binding um, when it does make sense. Yeah, it's a bit like there's a new live drawing. Yeah, I'll have to come down soon. Oh, is it? It's, it's oh. 18 pounds or whatever. Oh, so you're going to say 18 pounds. 18 dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be good to, again, you know, just test that out. Yeah. What was it called? I'll, I'll send you that. But yeah, because like with, with the life drawing, uh, it's really great that all the things that I was thinking about last night have come off in both the talks today. <laughs> where it's like you have to believe in things, and I'm like, I don't think I fully believe in VR, and that's why I'm maybe not the right teacher for this tool. But then um, also, like, having a subject that it makes sense to apply it to. Where it's like when Alexander and I were having our meeting and we're talking about life drawing and it's like about remote learning, yeah. and really. Life drawing, you can do it literally anywhere. Like if if you are alive, you can your body is existing somewhere in space, and you will be able to see something and draw that. And congratulations, you've done life drawing. So like the VR is less applicable to like remote life drawing because you can do that yourself, and then you're like trying to think of ways that it would make sense to like drawing in VR, but since life drawing again is so about observational skills, you're like, oh well, would you like bring a, a fake model into your VR and then draw the VR space? And you're like, well, why would you do that? Then you have to go through all that fast of putting on a headset and getting a, a model in to draw when it's like, you could not do any of that, it's just draw something and then 
it was kind of like it it felt like the the vor was the opposite of immersive where it's like you're putting something in between yeah. you and your task yeah. it just yes. but i'm like equally i can see that vor would work really well for other areas of the automation course that i don't teach yeah, like yeah. the 3d stuff where yeah. it'd be really helpful for that or even like weird experimental motion stuff mm -hmm. where you put know. on your thing and we're drawing while doing that <laughs> movements but i'm like it's not life drawing as a it's just getting uh, that uh, connection uh, working and this is what made, yeah when you said about the music that's what made me think about the the because i looked at the preview of it yeah and i was thinking well actually someone that, that does like them you do would be really good to evaluate that yeah you know, so say, well, what does this bring you know, is it just a gimmick, or is there actually something in here that I can, would be useful? Yeah. For? And and for us to be able to, again, that would be so again, nice case to be. So it's called gesture VR. But it's so crucially important that you could see when you have that one set of that yeah. one speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Like, well, why why do it in this room? But perhaps, you know, in some ways it provides an opportunity to show the outcomes of it. Yeah, in different media, in terms of connectivity and sharing. Yeah, I'm starting to think that it's like, it'll probably be less applicable to like the actual making of the work in life form and more useful for sharing work amongst other people. Because at the moment we're just like, by hand stuff on the Google Drive and being like, look at each other's stuff on the Google Drive. Yeah. But if it was like, oh, okay, on Friday we're going to go do our VR experience gallery trip to all the yeah. stuff you've made, that would be yeah. Yeah. So, better. So, so kind of critique of yeah. gesture and then going on how do we share yeah. and see if it works. Yeah. And then if you like it, that goes into the ecosystem. Yes, that yeah. becomes part of it. I think so. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And it's super useful because you can just like, and the iteration is just right there. <laughs> you yeah. can't have to do it fine, actually, but even with just seeing, like, you know, you are the camera or you actually can switch between the points of view. Yeah. That's just amazing. Really, it speeds up the whole process. Yeah, and a lot of free bits depends on. Yeah. 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 It's a really useful mm -hmm. tool, you know, it's for pre visualization. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's a uh, so graffiti artist works in Dublin, uh, Shane Sutton, and he does some big commissions. And he was showing me that he puts in a model. He, he's, he does he does a lot of astronauts. Oh, but he he was saying that he will make a model of the side of the building in New York, and he's got. Um, Graffiti software, and he works out everything in the VR before he knows graffiti VR. And he's even done, um, you know, there was a movie, and they wanted to graffiti um, place for a scene in the movie. And he had a model of where it would be, we could do it beforehand and show them different options. And he even used it for, he made a model of uh, some streets and buildings, and he could, he could fly down with the camera. Like a director deciding mm -hmm. what angles to look at and all that. Teams so doing some cool stuff with it as well. Okay, so multiplayer VR. It's okay. Do you want to go to? <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, my bit. So thanks a lot. I'll send you the. I can give you a copy of that. Oh, it's going to be great. Thanks very much. Thank you. Um, which is the PT? It's a, it's a, oh, right, sure. Yeah. Um, and yeah. the best way to get to go. Yeah. 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 No, it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, yeah, so, um, you can log into Teams or something else. Like, log off this, uh, log on to my login. This is, 
So there's some people here. And yeah, we're recording on this one. Oh. So it's this one, is it? But if you just go and get, uh, go on to Microsoft Office. Where's your PowerPoint? I'll bring it into. Uh, I need to get to the internet. And yes. I, but, I, but without my, I have to go and get for my frame. I don't remember it, but it would be automatic from my login, but not from somebody else's login. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, it'll be on my laptop. Let me just go and check my laptop now. Give me two seconds. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Joe. Yeah. 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 Just uh, while Julian is just doing a setup, Therese has asked me who and how many are going to the meal at tonight. Eva, Ron, I can Yeah. Chris. I'm not sure what time is it? It's at the form of eight, and we can't bring it forward. So, what we were suggesting, we, or what Trace was saying, was that maybe a way to work it would be that when we're finished here, that we'll have a little bit to do with headsets and things like this. Sort of thing. But that the library and the canteen will still be open, that spaces that you can uh, wait, and maybe that. And um, you say seven o'clock or something that we go down to Dunlary, just walk down. Um, it's very close to where we went the last night for anyone who was there the last night. Um, but um, on the way, um, Trace was saying uh, uh, maybe you know we could go into um, a pub and have a have a pint. Very Irish experience. You have to have a given thing and have a pint and then go from there into the. You know, and again, um, I think when we finish at four, you know, and um, you have your meeting with Daddy at half three, you know, so you know, then that'll be 20 minutes, 30 minutes, so you'll, you'll still be here for four. Um, and if you could help us with setting these, also, yeah, yeah, no, the like a, like a yeah. 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 That'd be great because uh, that would mean because we don't have to spend any time with Yeah, he can go through that as well. Yeah, let's Yeah. Yeah. There's something wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah. I've given up so I've got to even two from something. Yeah. Yeah. Without two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, It's uh, it's just here, this one. Oh, you <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it's Oh, here you go. Here. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, I tell you, I was fresh shit coming in the morning. There we go. There, yeah, for That's a dream to, to, to find the fucking black and black work, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, gee, that was so weird in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> work for me, please work for me. Work for me. Work for me. Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's what you're going to say. Sorry, Sorry, Yeah, here we go. So, and then we need some questions. You need to know how many. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, today we finish here. Okay, and then the meal is the uh, Mary, and then it is at uh, seven. What's oh, it? Nineteen forty-five. Nineteen forty-five. Okay, so there's a gap 
there. <laughs> uh, there but Perez said it takes 30 minutes to get down there. Uh, so um, Perez was suggesting that you know you, you can wait here, do emails, etc. etc. Et you know, we've waited here okay. or over the library. Um, and then at seven o'clock or so, maybe you know, eighteen thirty, walk down to uh, maybe. Uh, yeah. If you if you would like to have a seat, uh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. 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 Computers and one room in the <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, the bar. Do you be able to go from there to that thing? No, if uh, what it is is um, if you if you're logged in on this machine, I can maneuver this uh, one. Yeah, you cool. you, uh, uh, you come in onto Blackboard as a user or a guest rather. Yeah. 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 Y
And uh, and, uh, <laughs> and I can plug a, I can plug a laptop in or sorry, you can go against that. Keyboard fingers. Seems to be a wireless keyboard. Oh, yeah, they even brought some members, so it's crap as well. Yeah. So, we have batteries. This is the battery. I think you're, oh, this is obviously one. I think it's been used. Yeah, yeah. It's trying to pair itself with the. Okay, the idea coming in now is uh, choosing some. Yeah. Uh, 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 the router right here. Okay, brilliant. Yes. That's the sign that you're seeing. Thank you. That's your log on music. If it gives you a battery one, just for that thing. Yeah. Really, it's not just as Yeah. 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 So when you log into one of those spaces, do I have to go through this again? For, uh, Dave, sorry. Um, no, I just let's go through the. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're trying to do with those cases into uh, when you're in yeah. the do a share screen to the left watch. I can't remember where the share screen is. Yeah. Yes. Uh, is there some church members to work on this thing? Sorry. Oh, there you are. There's a working one. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Share screen, Jenny. Share screen. Oh, we need to go to the yeah. Oh, the share screen. Oh, sorry. Do we need to have a hasty word to that? Or? No, no, because you should be in there as a. Oh yeah, you be yeah, your your laptop. Yeah, you should be here. Or I think we stop. Oh, the, sorry, the, the, the purple, the purple, 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 purple. Yeah. 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 And then, um, so that's, that's there's three years of things there. And there's a share of content. Yeah, we're not, uh, oh, there you are, there you are, oh, there, right? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, good. So we've got to take five years and yeah. drag it into the share box. So if you use the this window up here, I think. Yeah, that's the um, um, share files. Share, share, oh, share application screen. Is that the one? Yeah, it's not a file, it's, it's the screen. Oh, it's the screen. Go back to the share an application screen. And then. Screen. Uh, you probably have to do it from this machine since it's on that one. Right. Yeah. So if you go into your. Is that so the team? Team class. Well, that's the team class. Oh, if you go into your team set here. Yeah. Oh, this is under a team set. Um, show again, it's from the lab commission. Where is the operation? Is that computer even connected? Well, that well, he's, in, he's in as a he's in as a guest. Oh, he's guest. Yeah. Um, I don't know if he's in as a guest. Um, I don't know if he's in as a guest. Um, I don't know if he's Way you get in. You, there's a two I used to set up as a moderator. Start tutorial. You can go to the Chrome tab if there's a window. That will have windows. Uh, yeah, there. there. Is it that Chrome tab? Yeah. 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 yeah, here we go, just yeah. yeah. Okay, then. Then produce what to share. Yeah, they changed it this year so they don't come up. Chrome <laughs> tab. <laughs> That one. It's okay. Is it which one? That's that one. Is that one? That's it. Yeah. So okay. Share. share. Oh, Woo! Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so the first lesson of Bior is it's a communal enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> it's very much a team effort. So, so um, yeah, I need a uh, person keyboard for this. Because now, because walk navigation would be difficult otherwise. So it's um yeah, it's tricky. Now probably is. Here I can, yes. So right, this is the accelerate collaborative <laughs> project space. One of okay. So what you can see. Here we go. That there? Oh, we still can't see that. Um, what's going on there? Oh, that's the wrong one. There's still the wrong one. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I don't know whose that is. Is that yours, Dave? It's not that yours. Is it that one? Oh, it's, it's, it's not. I know, yeah. It's not, uh, it's not moving. <laughs> okay, look. We'll, we'll, we'll say nothing. I'll do it on this. I'll just do it on this here. Just there's two of you in there. Yeah, there's people in. Yeah. Um, Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, it's it's oh, uh, yeah. Nice. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Fully invested. So yeah. So what was I trying to do here? What I was trying to do was I was imagining what would you use the OR for? Complexity. <laughs> <laughs> well, on a native demonstration, it's um, complexity. So to take something complex. 
and something that moves and something that's linked and try and explain processes behind it in a sectional way. So this is a 3D digital steam apparatus um, that is animated to move together, right? Powered by a piston, moves this crank, moves inside that wheel, moves the flywheel, which generates drive. So you're moving from vertical intermittent movement to continuous rotation movement. So you kind of think, how do you explain that to people? You know what I mean? Like, what would you use? VO is probably a good instance for this. I did have, um, there's another one that's an intermediate, and I'm doing a, a more simple one as well. So the idea being you have three strands. If you say you entered into the accelerate space, for instance, right? There would be three arenas you could go through, three doors you could go through to learn about, you know, the simple one, which is, sorry, this is frame the order, right? In case people, obviously, so a lot of people to be familiar, anybody who's on the train of legal to do this, is frame the order. Very useful. And one of the things I did notice, though, that it doesn't do, that engage, that's uh, engage appears to do, is, um, is it doesn't do animation, because this is my steam engine, and it is not animated. This is my, um, uh, there we go. That's the animation that is a browser animation, right? So that exists as a browser object that you can bring up on the net. It's a DLB file, and you can go change it and look around it, and it does move and it animates. And it's supposed to hear. And as of last night, I got I got an email from Gabe, the vice president of Frank VR, who says they're on the case getting animation sorted for this. Oh, this type of framework, right? Which is pretty good. Yeah. So this will be this kind of thing will be able to be moved to be seen moving in future in 3D. Okay. So that's the that's the turnaround one. That's a GLB. Now there's a lot of technical process between turning it from the 3D max object, which is this high quality, high poly, lots of color, proper textures, into a simplified GLB which is a much more stripped down in terms of information and bringing it into, um, yeah, into this space. Then at the back, that's, there's other ways to look at these things. I can't really get around there now, unfortunately, but at the, on that back wall, there's all the mechanisms laid out flat. They're act like they're 3D pieces, but they're laid out flat as if the machine is disassembled. Again, to try and show people what, you know, how... <laughs> Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> there you go. So, it, and obviously, when you're in there, it actually looks better. Um, people always that. But that's, it is actually, so there's all the bits laid out. And there's, oh, there's me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and that's, ah, come back down. There we go. This is definitely not the best way to maneuver around this. And then, yeah, there we go. And then, on this wall, there's explanatory, and there will be more of these, explanatory sections for each part. Okay? That's the kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a VR space? Yes. With, like, if you went in there with your headset, yes. can you interact so with I, that disassembled crank and make it? Not currently. Okay. Wouldn't that be lovely? <laughs> Wouldn't that be lovely? No, and you can't even see it. You can't even see the rotation. Because obviously, another thing would have on the wall. Yeah, doing their thing. Yeah, yeah. So the only animation that's possible in this moment is, is circular. Well, there's a spin animation you can any object, which is what the um, text is doing. Yeah. That text up there is um, is just doing that. It's just rotating yeah. around, you know. Um, so again, but yeah, it's um, it is. There we go. Yeah. So it's um, the idea is to try and get a space. Actually, that's the one that I wanted to go to. Yeah. So this is a kind of more of an explanation of what it is. Again, with each part named, you know, piston drive, crankshaft, flywheel, drive shaft, etc. So yeah, that's one case use for BO. Right now, yes, it is heavily loaded on a lot of technical understanding about file transfers and transferring from OBJ to GLB and a lot of that stuff. But 
the usability of this at that end, if you're able to bring stuff like that in, it's really interesting. Because the next step is the physics. The next step is having linkages that move one another and stuff like that. And that will happen. It will absolutely happen. There's no, there's no doubt about it. Because these, all of these platforms, like Engage as well, Framebior, they're all working very hard trying to improve the things. And the, the file format, which is uh, Microsoft, which is Babylon, I think, you know, it's kind of, well, Microsoft related, that's the one that produces these type of files that are ready for HTML5. And they already have, you can see that they have you know, physics enabled in them. They aren't activated yet, but they're ready to go. So <laughs> that was, um, there's a couple of other, if I had if I had myself hooked up to a PC, I'd show you the other room, so I'm not going to bother you to do the same trial again. There's another room, another one about scanning, and another one about head sculpting, but I'm going to do another one, a simpler one, about just bringing in a picture and putting it on the wall and telling a story, right? Okay. But this one is, yeah, for the advanced use of case, the idea of really using VOR for its absolutely best potential, which is to see things moving in a space that you can actually walk around. You know, and preferably exactly interact with. Mm -hmm. so, so another thing is that obviously because that uh, Tony, I I've only started my digital project, my advanced digital with my clients. So they did character design masks. We scanned those this morning with a scanner. We're going to bring them in to VR, and I want to put some kind of interactive VR session together with them to see, in a, re in a real student scenario, how they react to that, whether it helps them, and get some feedback. Like, they give it probably yeah. feedback from yeah. it, do you know what I mean? And see whether it's just novelty, whether it's actually of use. Um, but unfortunately, the timing of our year just didn't allow us to be ready for this presentation. So. Any questions? Uh, but, but just, uh, just an observation. Um, kind of conceptually, it feels really poetic to, yeah. to be kind of, um, representing, you know, steam to drive mechanisms, the epitome of the industrial revolution in brain VR, and really thinking about pre and post industrialism. I was kind of also then thinking about life during the way that let's start to do let's draw these objects, let's understand them through the way of our making. Well, let's just not do it. Let's not worry about them as I've had it worse, let's let's understand them through our yeah. Um so yeah, that's that's really beautiful. And I'm really interested in how what forms of collaboration are successful but across IAT where we got to, as I understand it, is that we have a space, that's is one of the other space as well. We were going to go and review the process that we've undertaken, the process that we each of the undertaken, so we could go and do that jointly. Um, for the academics, I really want to do that. Thanks, Quinn. Um, Ken. No, that's great. I mean, it's actually, can we put the yeah, yeah, right through here? That's that's it. Uh, I think, Jenny, just to add to that, I mean, yeah. that was something we discussed in the London session, and so we said we just look at what the issue we've got with the issue, the point we reached with our original factor and based on this understanding of this. Tell me that I've been through this actually. Yeah. Okay, yeah, if I can. A number of. Um, uh, the keyboard's on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, it's down the bottom there. So are you trying to get a fresh page? Oh, yeah. I can just yeah. delete some of this because it starts with AC. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah this. That is my login. Yeah. That's okay. That's uh, not even trying to think. Was it? Yeah. 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 Um, we're assessing that work a lot at the other thing is about well, that we, we use the accelerate space as a hub for people to go and visit these various experiments. Um, the space is also used by the that space. Cool. We're we thinking of the, because we've got the accelerate. Yeah, so I think we'll put the links to all these in. Yeah, so I'll. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I want to work with everyone on how to design it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's also what's quite, quite interesting. It's a bit tricky to name. It's really nice seeing what you've done. I want to see your other ones as well. Yep. Um, it's really nice seeing what Matt's done. Because, you know, I think before we design the accelerate space, we take inspiration from everyone else, how everyone else has approached the spaces and we design it that way. Do you know what I really liked in Engage there in, was that little canvas, yeah. tanks and little uh, yeah, navigation yeah. bar? Yeah, you, 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 because if that was in the corner here all the time, that would bring you back it's to an original space. Yeah. yeah, so we go into math space, but then that you'd say, well, that's the accelerate space there, and it was always with you, you know. That would be really else in one one then, because you could just go back for, for, for a novice uh, user, there's always a danger, they'll go into a space. And they just don't know where to, how to go back. And the, the worst case scenario is they start clicking the arrow back yeah. and they get out of frame. You know what I mean? So there is some sound to get in the bottom bar that doesn't work like that. But yeah. It's not easy yeah. sound. Yeah. Really... Can you attach things to the hands? Absolutely. So we can't change, we can't change the, the user experience. Oh, to we can't really talk to the person. We can talk to the person. <laughs> That takes some time. What, what we can do is just make sure that when we do it, we have a consistency of navigation. As yeah. you would any website. Yeah. Um, it was really interesting. I was here listening to a talk about, you know, everyone's a few years ago, or even now, they're saying, you know, don't bother building a website. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. And mm -hmm. that, that's always been the, 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 but now that's like old news. And now I want to say, don't build a website unless it's got some sort of 3D functionality. Yeah. So all the sort of IKEA websites, all that, you can, you can look at models, you can spin models around. You can look, yeah, you've got to have that, that, you know, that fluency of being able to integrate 3D into your website. Yeah. So, you know, this is all fundamental learning about you know, how, how, to, how to create 3D websites. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I have great plans to do. One of the things I would have loved to have done was replicate a uh, physical space as a VR space. So if people were at a meeting, they would be in this room virtually, yeah. as well as the people in this room, do you know what I mean? But it just wasn't to be able to get a free VR license and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's real massive push. That would be a lovely interesting thing to do. Well, that's kind of funny because the well, map can show yeah. us now because I think what that's done is a spin on that. Yeah, yeah cool. I mean, this replicates our studio. I had a look at it. <laughs> my, my intention was to do exactly what you yeah. said. So I, I think the, the thinking was um, just in terms of what we bring our houses in to evaluate at the end of the project. And, and I just thought we started in that first meeting we had in Bath. I showed that. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you remember that there was that padlet yeah, with yeah, the suggested yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the idea was just how can I maybe take that padlet, which was quite accessible and um, it took me conveniently to the workflow, and how might that translate into a three dimensional space? So, we just moved around the room going through the stages with sort of different links to the relevant documents. And, um, and the videos and the outputs, and then there were kind of voice zones in front of each of them to sit down and talk about those, those experiences. Uh, and then that there's a link to, to our sort of UAL immersive video space there. So that's what this was really. It was just trying to replicate like those chairs are big visual presence in our studio and I, we haven't really tested it yet I, I threw this together quite quickly so the models aren't the near as, as good as yours Julian but I, I was quite worried about creating the, the space and, and but I just felt like you don't really need it actually and and I, I think the more I listen to conversations the closer you get to an actual space the less fun it gets really so um, I think we've got to test it, but I wouldn't necessarily want to, for it to be more real than that. That's my thinking at the moment. Um, there's another space actually that our MA, some of our MA students set up a reader group. I don't know if it's worth showing that because that's a bit more, that has the links to, to other 
pages, maybe I'll yeah, yeah, that up quickly. Uh, well, I, I think this is what's really nice, is, is what, what you did, Julian, and I think, you know, that going into that room, you get a, it's very simple, mm -hmm. and, you know, you kind of understand what's going on, because of a, you know, it's very intuitive, you don't need to sort of work it out, it's kind of, you know, there's a flow. Yeah, 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 and, it's, and, and, it, and it actually suits that room, you know, yeah. where I've got many stuff like this, in, in that room that you use. Look really over over. I've seen many rooms too busy. Right, too busy. Yeah, exactly. And, and when, as soon as I saw this, I was yeah. like, that's spot on. Yeah. Like, you know, that's that's really nice. this. I'm going to be using Big Seven. That's nice. That's totally your point. Um, no, no nonsense. Get into your head. So, you can't get into it. Exactly. so I think what I'm going to do just as a start, all the links get yeah. into the main something. Yeah. Without designing it too much. Yeah. Um, that's brilliant. That's then, really yeah, so we can hop off into these spaces. Um, so, so yeah, this um, was the MA sort of reader group that, that Daryl worked with. So there's sort of a, a, a lobby, if you like, that introduces the aspects of the pathways and then they link to Set for um, sorry for being very bored. If I, there, I've just been off the restaurant, they could take us at 6 15, which is new, Ooh. but that's everyone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Amazing, yeah. Very yeah. happy yeah, people yeah. here who would love to come at 6 15. <laughs> Even better, <laughs> wonderful. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye. Lovely. Happy days. <laughs> Hi. Good to see you all. You look bright and alert. So, yeah, yeah. so I don't know much about the content here, but this was the space designed by students to do uh, their, their kind of unit, unit two. Yeah, I mean, the really project. It's precisely that asking MA students to gather secondary resources to produce an edited reader on a particular theme and subject. Part of what would be the part of the second unit. So that theme was technology very broad. The idea was that they then start to focus their research, put together materials, not dissimilar really to the idea of a, a mini, miniature kind of um, ecology um, of learning in the history theme. It was all they made a decision to produce this space as opposed to either a website or in some cases a physical. So they made the ask us that you can access a lot of review to I think that's that's a definite question for us is is the difference between those spaces that are designed and hosted by students compared to how we might. Yeah. And the difference is there, and how we can learn from those spaces so that our spaces don't become like many online academic spaces and still be exciting, engaging, inspirational, and not just a, a, a kind of you know, a Teams VR. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, these examples. Um, yeah, we can certainly share with the needs of these. Sure. But I guess that's where it gets confusing to people. It, it, I think with our navigation, we've got to, it like so it can, we should go off to space and then you can't find out how to do If we lose the sense of consistency, then like going to a space like this, it's, 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 it's great, but it's, it's not, it's, it kind of takes you out. So, I guess, yeah, we need to make that decision about. But I, I like those revolving uh, things, and, and there is an animation. Uh, you can apply animations to models, right? Or is it? Uh, well, do, do you, I have. Do you do you I have by accident. I didn't know. I imported the model in, and it sort of it it, it kind of it brought in one well, that not the spinning. It brought in some of the. It was a Blender model, and it actually brought in the animation. Um, and I had no intention that it was going to do that, but since I don't know. What they've adjusted, it, it didn't work. It, it, that's what. That's why I thought that's even going to work, and it didn't work. And then yeah. Working on it, so yeah. Okay. But so that's 
it's these models that are sort of well, that's actually staff models, student work from a workshop, and I think it's when you start bringing the work into the space that it yeah, yeah. really sort of comes alive. So it's starting to look like a studio, yeah, the local, yeah, exactly, because that was what was great when we were walking around yesterday, and see, especially young mm -hmm. nation students, it's just like so to see that, and, um, and the life, you know, and the sort of you, the individual sort of staff that we've got, and uh, I think. You don't really get that when you go to the arts, so you don't really place it. But when you start having these little things like that, you've had the things really important. Can I ask you a quick question? So, yes, to start there, the space that you just showed us, you use that as a resource for the students and say, and you use it in order to just to. That's a good idea. All right, well, that's the plan. Well, that's the plan. I so, so really, yeah, so it has a couple of um, specificity to it, like yes. like to, yeah, okay, we're using this space for a really particular reason. Exactly. Okay. It was that's good. super interesting, you see, because actually it's got that other focus and helps us understand how, well, I mean, I don't know if this feels like it's going in another direction from this project um, in a really good direction for us, because it's something that we, we have been testing, like I say, a little bit. Um, but we've been you know, looking specifically at work mm -hmm. This is about just using it as a tool to explain principles, which is, um, and I'm, you know, you've arguably with you know, principles being explained all the time, right? but looking really clear and focused. Yeah. It's, and that, in a way, is, a, is, a, is an example of um, how it functions pedagogically, so self expansion. Um, this, you know, the, 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 the thing that we produce whatever form that takes at the end of this whole process is primarily for students. Yeah, well, I mean, but I think this is a really key point, isn't it? Because I think what you, what you are showing there yeah. is a thing for students to use, but it's an example that staff or academic staff can refer to to understand an underlying principle about how you might teach something um, for sure, yeah, but it, using a piece of technology that perhaps most teachers have won't have had either access to or familiarity with, to feel comfortable with, to understand how it might be applied. Yeah. Examples are always really helpful. Right? Yeah. Um, but the key, well, one of the questions I think that emerges out of this for me around this project is okay, well, in a way, Jenny, you know, it's like one of those things that you come on. You know when you say to students, who, who's the audience for this work? Yeah. Everybody's the audience. And you go, that's not, it doesn't work like that necessarily. And I think we might need to understand, as we've discussed a little bit, okay, the navigation of the platform, or the, the thing that takes us into this kind of ecology of different resources, it's got to be really, really well designed. It just has, it can't be poorly designed because it's going to have to help users. Access information which is actually genuinely useful for them and enables them to make good decisions about where they're going to go because otherwise it could just be a mad hit and mix of stuff where the, the routes through and navigation through these different resources will be confusing rather than enlightening. So, yeah, that was one of the conversations we had in one day in a very practical sense, the website. So, that feels like a, yeah, I mean, I've got lots of part of that conversation, but I heard second hand how it works, and it sounds like that's a good, that's a really good way to do it. Because, I mean, in a way, you can have one thing appearing twice in two different spaces yeah. because it would be understood contextually differently. Yeah, and have to. That's an exact point, but nobody's really seen engine search, you know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a metaphor for a process, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, it could be used by me to teach mechanical principles for a model animation module, for instance, um, or indeed even to teach 3D digital students how to make the same thing in digital yeah. and how to animate it in digital. Do you know what or I mean? Or that's a case study for like, teaching staff. Or, or, okay. And that's what it was made for originally, exactly. Yeah. So it has, it has a... It has a it's not cool. Yeah. 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 Sorry, this is a bit of a... One of the things that explained to me yesterday, space is obviously we don't have those days. Because it's Ian has just shown you the idea that because that's very much a studio space, we will be using the space and 
student at their own desk and they could import their models and their work. And then, like in Fran, you use the scenes menu. So, in theory, I could enter that space and go and sit at everyone's desks and they could present the work that they've done in the space. And I don't think that's a giant leap at all. I think that's something that can sort of set up quite quickly. Um, but just having, having that. I just think that would be really, really distinct. And even just with a, a, a they don't have to worry about exactly this, this empty space. It's very mid century modernist desk, got covered in fluffy toys or whatever, and just moving through those desk spaces. Um, for us, that would, that would feel like a really nice space to place for the tutorial. It's interesting to me because it also, like, we talked about it yesterday that when we were recreating how we have in the tool we can create a of things. Right? Maybe you have this one that well, doesn't have to have a Well, I don't, I don't think it would be a different kind of thing. Yes, I'll be in the Okay, okay. So, and, but I don't see the desk as just then recreating what right. they've got at home. I think it would be. Hello everyone. Uh, you've still got the good weather. Yes. We ordered it specially. Yeah, well it's uh, uh, um it's not like that here at the moment. So uh good to good to see you all. Uh, um funny to be back in a space, albeit on the uh, looking in rather than looking out, uh uh that I was in only on, on Monday. Um so um and uh, um, so just to just to clarify with um, Therese and David, uh, I think on the, the agenda, we said um, uh, I could run until about two, two to four and I wasn't intending to go longer than that. But just to check that I'm not uh, that there's not anything else that you need to uh, uh, um, to do in the in the next half hour or so. No, I, th I think the floor is yours, um, uh, Ian. Um, everyone happy with that? Yeah. Four o'clock, up to about four. Yeah. They're all okay. yours. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, um, just to uh, introduce myself, because there are a couple of uh, new colleagues from, particularly from Poland, in the room, so um, who I wasn't able to uh, uh, to meet in person. Um, so I'm Ian Gad. I am the uh, the project coordinator for Accelerate, um, based in uh, Bath Spa, uh, and and my role essentially is to oversee the kind of management of the project. Uh, I although I'm um, you know I'm an academic professor of, of English literature. I'm not a subject specialist with this, so um, that's why uh, we've made sure that the uh, um, the project is packed full of uh, specialists from art and design and learning technology and uh, immersive tech to 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 help uh, um, support the project through to its uh, conclusion. But what I wanted to talk about today um, was part of that conclusion, uh, part of the kind of uh, the final stage of the project, and and I want to do that for for a couple of reasons. One is because um, I think it's, it, it may be helpful for you to, to know um, how the project is going to be uh, um, launched to the world in terms of its, its findings, um, but also because as, uh, um, as people who've been involved in the project, um, uh, you know, at the, at the, the, the front of the, uh, the project, working with students, working with the technology, working with uh, your subject specialist uh, specialisms um, that we want you to be part of that uh, um, that process. So uh, to use first of all to use the language of the of the grant, um, we have money um, that was part of the budget. It was an expected part of the the project as it was structured um, for what what are called in Erasmus speak multiplier events. And multiplier events essentially are promotional events, they're public engagement events, there are ways of um, talking about the project um, with people outside of the, uh, um, the partners involved. Uh, multiplier events can take various forms. Um, 
the way that we've structured it in this project is that we have scheduled a single day of multiplier events that will take place simultaneously across the uh, um, the project partners. Um, that uh, um, some of that is flexible. Um, we were talking about this on Monday that there, that there may be other activities that take place. We've we've put aside a whole day, but it may be that we won't need to use the whole day. Um, but the reason that we want it to be simultaneous is that we do want some element of that event or those events um, to take place in a shared immersive space um, so that people who attend the, uh, um, a multiplier event, whether that's in um, England or in uh, um, Ukraine or in Poland or in Ireland, uh, that they will um, be able to interact with people somewhere else uh, in uh, in the immersive space. So the um, the other thing about the multiplier event before I get to the the, the kind of content of it is that um, and this I realise is a rather instrumental way of of thinking about it, but but I hope it does explain a little bit of the how we're thinking about the goals of these uh, uh, multiplier events. Um, the, the way that they're funded is that for every person who attends, who is not a member of your university or one of the university partners involved in the project, um, for everyone who attends, we will receive 100 euros direct from uh, Erasmus. Um, for the events that are taking place in the UK, Ireland and Poland, um, we, uh, um, we can get up to 4,000 euros. So in other words, 40 people. If we get 40 people sign up, attend, who are not members of our uh, institutions, each um, organising, each host partner will get 4,000 euros, uh, um, which they can spend on anything related to the project. Um, and for the Ukrainian, looking at uh, uh, hopefully 70, up to 7,000 uh, euros. Um, if we don't get those targets, we get less money. So, so that's the kind of instrumental uh, project coordinator way of looking at the, the, the event. We want to be able to get people in from outside. Now, if you think about, well, what does that mean in practice? It means thinking about the kind of audiences that we might want to uh, engage with in terms of the work we've been doing. And those could be uh, um, uh, staff and students from other higher education organizations and institutions. Um, it might be from uh, uh, other groups and organizations that are not uh, uh, um, higher education uh, institutions, whether those are in the heritage sector, you know, galleries, museums, theaters, uh, um, or indeed the tech sector. Um, and it could be individual uh, professionals working in art and design or working in technology. Um, so those are the kind of audiences we're thinking of. And so if you then reverse engineer that, we need to think about, well, what, what will draw them in? What will be the things that will make this these events interesting? Um, we have been we when i mean we are talking about the kind of the, the the lead representatives from each of the partners we've been thinking about this um for a few months uh so there was a a paper which i will um sh share with you on screen in a moment um that put down on paper some of the issues that we were uh, or some of the ways of thinking about these events um and um and we haven't got much further than that um, the, uh, on Monday, we were talking about, from each institution, about where those might take place, whether you want to take them take place on a university or college campus, whether you want to take, they want to take place somewhere else, um, and what the kind of logistics of that might be. Um, also, we were talking about whether a, a half day might be a better, uh, a, a more effective way of being able to reach uh, um, the people we want to reach rather than asking people to come for a full day. Um, but the other thing, and this is why I'm wanting to talk to you about it, is because we obviously want those uh, members of staff involved in the case studies who have been working on Accelerate with students 
with the technology, thinking about how it, 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 it can help them. We're wanting you to be part of this. We're also wanting the ALSAs, the Accessible Learning Student Ambassadors, also to be part of this. So we're wanting this to be uh, an opportunity, yes, to talk about the project overall, but really uh, um, much more an opportunity for, um, for staff and students who've been working uh, um, with the technology, thinking about how it can work with or, or, or its application for uh, their subject areas. We want you to be leading in terms of providing the kind of content, um, whether that's um, talking about the work you've been doing or providing things for people to uh, explore in an immersive space or whatever. Um, so I'm just going to put, put this, the document up on screen and I'll circulate that um, uh, to you afterwards. Um, and what I'll do is I'll just whiz through some of the key bits and then I'm going to go uh, uh, and stop talking and listen to you um, uh, about your ideas. This won't be the only time we'll talk about this. This is the start of a conversation with all of you about how this might work and, um, and for you to have not just with me, but also with your uh, colleagues in your institution. So, but I will go and share the screen uh, now. So hold on. Um, share. So. So. Uh, we will hold five simultaneous one day events, as I've already said. It may be that they're not one day, um, they may be half day. Um, a side note, if you don't get all the people you want, it may be that you can hold, it's perfectly acceptable if you hold a second event, as long as it happens before the end of the project, i.e. the end of May. Um, so, but the, the, the primary goal, which we said in the application, five simultaneous events. Um, as I mentioned, key objectives to disseminate, but also to strengthen ties. Uh, um, uh, in, and that's a very broad way of saying, you know, public engagement in, 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 um, in terms of the project. We have identified a date. So the 18th of May, 2023, um, there'll be a technical rehearsal a week before, um, but that's the, that's the date. Um, obviously we have time zone issues and I, I, I a little later in this paper I, I've talked through how that might work in practice um, but uh, um, but that the date is fixed remember that the 31st of May is the end of the project so we wanted to pick a date as late as possible in order to be able to maximize what we were uh, um, the work that we we had done or we have done by then um, the locations so these are from um, the uh, uh, application. So we'll hold one in Bath, one in London, one in Dublin, one in Warsaw, and then one in Ukraine. And one of the things that we will need to talk to colleagues about uh, is whether that should be in Chernovitsi or in Sumy, uh, whether it's somewhere else or whether it's online. Um, and some of that may be uh, uh, a discussion you know, to be had in the spring uh, um, when, when hopefully things will be looking much, much more positive. Um, for Ukraine and um, we can think about the, the kind of logistics of, of, of that but essentially five in these locations. Um, the, um, the venue needs to be ideally one that has a strong connection with your institution and ideally one with an art and design focus. Um, it needs to be able to accommodate uh, up, you know, at least the number of attendees we're wanting to attract uh, it needs to also have good tech uh, and internet um, uh, kind of facilities. I've talked about the audience already, um, but just to reiterate, educational, kind of uh, cultural uh, uh, um, art design, professional uh, uh, and tech. I've mentioned 40 for the UK, Ireland and Poland and 70 ideally for Ukraine. Um, so um, now there will be an element and it, this can be quite short because I don't think uh, um, it needs to take up too much time. It won't be the, necessarily the most interesting thing for people coming to uh, engage with the event, but we will need to talk about the project. We need to talk about 
um, what we've done, um, talk about the resources we have, the training course, um, but the focus will be the immersive ecosystems with the case studies embedded. Um, and, and then we've said in the application, once launched, attendees will be encouraged directly with the ecosystem through a web-based interface, uh, including their own mobile phones. At least two VR headsets will be available. Um, it may be that you have access to more, but a more immersive experience and the opportunity for attendees to meet other uh, attendees elsewhere. Um, we've also said there'll be structured time for discussion and networking, but that may be something we want to uh, renegotiate. Um, and in blue here, I put some questions. Um, you know, what do we want to add change? Do you want to have uh, um, presentations or demos from people outside of the project? Obviously, Gravity Sketch is becoming a, uh, quite a visible partner uh, with the project. How might the students be involved? And so on. Um, the proposed timings here um, are probably too long particularly given the conversations we were having, but it was just a reminder that obviously we're working on three separate time zones. And we do want to make sure that um, there is some kind of overlap within the timing so that uh, um, everybody can be online at, at the same point, at some point in the session. Um, and so, and possible schedule. So this was the longer version. We've not discussed uh, um, uh, this with uh, um, in any more detail, but just to give you an idea of how it might look, a um, bit on the project, then the ecosystem, and then a, a kind of series of immersive opportunities um, where people are then uh, 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 online at the same time. Um, one of the questions that, or the key thing, and this is what I really want to get from uh, from you, and because this is the final point, is well, what, what should we include? You know, what will be the thing that will really draw people in, that people will value, that will be exciting uh, and engaging and that we can deliver? Um, how do we uh, achieve that? How do we deal with the fact that we, you know, those people that will be coming along, some may have never had much uh, um, experience of immersive tech. Others may have had uh, uh, a lot of in uh, knowledge about uh, immersive technology, but just haven't experienced or haven't seen how it can be used for art and design. So, so we need to be able to have some kind of uh, um, differentiated uh, uh, event that would recognise those different kind of uh, um, uh, perspectives. So, um, and then the last bit here is um, the logistics, but that's that's not something we need to talk about. So. Um, I will stop there, I will stop sharing, and I will uh, um, hand over to you for initial thoughts. So, as I said, this is something that, um, this is a start of a conversation, we've got until May, um, we've got to do a bit of planning. One of the things that we decided uh, on Monday was that the, um, uh, the training in Poland in April, um, that we will do quite a lot of the kind of practicing and rehearsing for this in Poland. So that will give us an opportunity to uh, um, you know, work through this in practice. But um, I'd welcome comments, thoughts about what, what you think the multiple events could do, what could, they should contain, how you think the case studies might be involved. Um, so over, over to you, David, do you need to go and unmute the, uh, the system or, uh, or is it already unmuted? I can't hear you at all, so I assume you're muted. And I will take notes. Can you, uh, you can hear us now, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay. Ideas for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I have to say, I must say, um, we've just spent the last two hours uh, with Rob and Julian uh, and Matt uh, presenting, I would say, a very short, concise case studies. Uh, Matt, uh, uh, Rob presented, uh, I think, four main case studies. Julian uh, had one, but there was uh, multiple components, and then Matt presented two. 
And I have to say that um, uh, so my, my head is really <laughs> absolutely. So what I'm saying is that um, uh, it strikes me that um, we could make a big mistake as a project in overthinking this. Um, to be honest, I believe, again, that we can have a multiplayer event in the morning, uh, which what we have. Um, we just need to kind of recognize a little bit what we have and then frame us from a project point of view, you know, like mass uh, the, um, presentations, I think we're very much doing that, you know, thinking very much about uh, the, the, uh, uh, the camera was faced and how it works. And also from a student and from an art and design point of view, thinking um, about how it works as a learning space. And I think if if each of our institutions was to do that with one uh, uh, space, um, we, we would be done. Because visitors, um, uh, you know, I think when you're saying what's in it for the viewer or the visitor, you know, um, you know, uh, we have to identify clearly who they would be. You know, for example, in IDT, I think we would be thinking about. Um, should there be a component of an outreach uh, in the local area? For example, the local library down the lexicon, it's a sexy place. It's raised as a hand up. Yeah. Or we were even thinking, should we go down to one of our feeder schools, for example, um, where we get a lot of applicants and just say, look, this is really cool. Um, and you're going to get to get, put a headset on, etc. For most of the, well, not for most of the kids, but for some of the kids, that's going to be exciting enough, you know. And then to have something that's pointed towards that demographic would be um, would be the thing. And really, I think maths, uh, uh, the, the first phase especially was was cool in that the simplicity of it really clarified. Uh, what it was doing, like, you know, that was neat in itself, you know. Um, that's really what I did. Yeah, sorry, like, David, just um, it, it also strikes me here locally. I just like we're talking, in, I have a, 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 a thought there is a, um, a new, a, a lot of focus in the education sector on digital transformation, and they are appointing in each institution a lead. Um, a leader, if you like, a lead person to um, engage with projects that have a digital transformation piece to it. And it strikes me, David, that we could showcase that to the national end tutors, yeah. which would actually give us the possibility of hitting, uh, reaching out to every HEI, but by doing it through the end tutors, that new scheme. The multiplier, does the multiplier have to be completely physical? I mean, in the sense that do the people have to come to the event, Ian? Yeah, I'm just thinking, no, 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 I'm just thinking that that's, that's a good question. That's a good question. I, um, I need to double check that. I, I think, I mean, w when we were thinking about the Ukrainian event, um, we we were obviously thinking about it as as possibly online, but I can't remember if that me that would be invoking it under the force majeure situation or whether uh, um, it could be, you know, whether routine it could be online. There, there's a logistic thing in that we need to somehow record attendance because, yes, traditionally signatures are what gets you the, the, the euros. Um, but um, we will we will look into that. And it may I mean, it may well be that that could be, you know, a hybrid event where you have uh, um, a number of people in the room, but you also then open it more broadly would be no bad thing and if you said yes we've got 40 people in the room but we've got another 50 joining online yeah, that, even that... with the mobilities uh, say with the european university at the moment and um, we love the physical mobilities okay you know so we go to lisbon or we go to belgium or whatever but they're also desperate to count the virtual mobilities mm. so if we come together 
uh, for an event or a meeting or whatever, um, a city club event which happens every fortnight or whatever, um, that's all counted as a virtual mobility. And again, attendance registration at that event is uh, counted rigorously, you know, uh, through our uh, QR codes in, in person and then through logout. You know, uh, Jenny, you were yeah. that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I was thinking across there, obviously, it doesn't need to be a, a, a day long session, so there could be a, more, a, a morning session for schools and students, yeah. the outreach for local regions, then, as, then a business, as in tech sector. Heritage Museum Gallery section and then an HEI section. It's going to be a lot of work, um, but so that we're catering to those different audiences. But to be honest, from a project point of view, if we had one space each, if we, you know, in one space each, if a school kid or somebody from our higher education sector came in and we had them in IGT, for example, and we said, and they would jump over to that spa. You know, yeah. and Jenny is waiting there, and you go too, and then to go to UAL, matches there, you know, and then we go to Chamisi and uh, 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 Valeria and Miroslava and uh, Natalia and Alexander, you know, and then each of us just said, Hi, yeah, this is us being in this area, you know, I know that's a simplification, but even if we had five spaces, we're done. I mean, you know, people are just going to need a serious coffee after that, <laughs> because, you know, like as Rob said, you know, with the virtual spaces that sort of double, they believe. And I actually went to Ukraine. <laughs> you know, I, I was in Sumi talking to Constantine and talking to Yuri. And then I went to Bath and I was talking to Jenny and she was there in her space. In you know, and it's like, let me sit down. <laughs> you know, uh, it's you know, I think yeah, we don't need to really either localize it excessively. <laughs> Because I think um, if we keep it that, um, that collectively, you know, bringing people to our institutions or to somewhere in our locality, some lo uh, location, as Ian has said, the descriptor, but actually then we're saying, but the action is in the UK and it's in the UK and it's in SWPS involved in the school farm. I think that's kind of, oh my God. Uh, and now we suddenly see this is a real VR space, and we are our colleagues are here with us in the space. You know, they're they're in a different form, yeah. but they are very much there. I think you're right. I just need to keep it simple, very simple. Yeah. Um, we, we have a good example of what David said just basically how you know keep it short, simple, not be too. You missed time. You else. missed the tour of Dublin. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> Uh, I've been to Marsh's library where Sweet <laughs> used to write <laughs> in virtual space. <laughs> so, and, and I think we do need to split it up, ideally, into, into a morning session, an afternoon session, and so we can split the numbers down to 2020, um, and that'll be more manageable. Yeah. Um, I think it'd be too tricky to target specific sectors, you know, in terms of invites. And, Coordinate invites. Uh, I, I think we, uh, yeah, we do need to work on how we coordinate, how we, yeah. how we sort of co-present, if you like. This. I'm, I'm assuming that is part of what we need to do. Right? We need to go. Yeah. It's not that we've got to deliver them at the same time. We've got to, we've got to demonstrate that we're delivering at the same time, right? So, Although, so yeah, yeah, as we discussed, right? yeah, as, as so we, we, yeah, we'll be presenting. Yeah. And then and all the partners will see our little presentation, and yeah. then each partner will present, and we'll all see each other's presentation. Is that is that correct? That well, I mean, it's up to us, but I I think I think that would be a very sensible approach because it means that there's less replication. We're not having to speak on behalf of partners, um, but it also means that there's just our little, you know, our own little bits, and then and yeah. then the the primary role will be. Um, uh, for each event will be partly about the logistics and thinking about audience, but then it will just be uh, a, a kind of, there's an overarching framework and then there will be different elements in between. I mean, it, it feels a bit like, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the Eurovision voting uh, session okay. where we could say, you know, and now we go live to 
uh, to Dublin or to Warsaw or, 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 or wherever. And, and I think, I think that, that makes sense. I don't think, I, well, if I put it another way, the way that you know, my students would be most reassured by, I don't want you to do extra work on this. I want, I want this to be a kind of... I, I we want can this relate to, a... to what the students related. <laughs> yes, that's what I thought. Okay, I... The next action is just to do is um, to, to locally everyone do an introduction yes. to the project. Uh, locally, in, in, the, in, the, in the local languages, whatever. Um, uh, go through the website, like so. Go through those, the, 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 where to find everything, what, what there is. Then we have a little breakout session into in introducing each partner to each other, and we kind of have a cross communications. And then we go into back locally into a practical uh, experimentation where we can mix together uh, in the in the immersive. And that's it, basically. That's it. That that's part. it. And I, and I think I think the other um, uh, just thinking about this, given what you've said, I think I think a morning and afternoon session makes. A lot of sense it, it keeps the numbers down makes it more manageable it also means if we if we're kind of canny about this if we um if each partner thinks about well which community can we most readily engage with through our existing partnerships and it may be that you have uh, um some partners who say yeah i'm going to work you know we, we can we can bring in uh, uh art professional art and designers very easily but we can't really bring in other colleges and, and uh, universities because we just don't have people nearby. Others may say, yeah, we can bring in educational establishments, but we can't bring in uh, uh, um, uh, um, uh, professionals. So, you know, collectively, we have reached all these different communities, but it doesn't mean that each event has to reach all the communities uh, uh, um, uh, in its own way. So I think, um, or in it separately, I think, I, think, I think we can be canny about that. The one thing I'd throw into the mix here, which obviously we, we don't yet know, but it's something for um, uh, colleagues in Chernovitsi and, and Sumi to think about, is how how this might work for you. Because it's, um, you know, when, when, we, when we thought about the application, that was COVID times, it was, uh, it was uh, um, the time before the, the Russian uh, aggression. So, the, we were then thinking in rather different terms, but we were still assuming that it would be, you know, it would be possible potentially for some kind of hybrid experience. You, your events are up to 70, so that allows for more money sharing between, uh, um, you know, the sharing between the two uh, universities. Um, but it may be that you want to do something you know, over and above. So it may be that you do similar things to us, but it may be that also you have additional multiplier events in Ukrainian that are uh, um, perhaps uh, have a slightly different focus that, that you know, we can pop into, but are not necessarily taking place uh, um, simultaneously with all other partners. So, so there will be a conversation to be had with, with colleagues in Ukraine about how, how this might look for them, because I think the immersive getting people together for an immersive experience would be really valuable, but that is going to be, you know, that would be tricky no matter what, because Chernovitsi and Sumi are uh, pretty much on either ends of the, uh, uh, of Ukraine. So, um, so that's something I think that colleagues there need to think about and we will have a separate conversation around. Um, but I, but I think just to go back to where it feels like we've, uh, um, there's a kind of consensus, keep it small, keep it focused, uh, and yes, there'll be a kind of local um, package that you will have to deliver, but otherwise the the the, uh, the kind of shared experience is one that we all collectively contribute to based on what we're already doing in our case studies. So there wouldn't be additional uh, um, uh, work required. It would just be the kind of the logical conclusion of you showing what you've done and what you found out and, and the kind of cool spaces that you've created. That will be the, the presentation of the ecosystem. So when we go to each partner, we'll yes. get a different spin on the ecosystem. Yes. Um, and obviously, from our side, we can, we've got Nick and we'll, we'll concentrate on the platform. But I think what we'll find is when we go to Ukraine, that we'll have a, the, the tools that you've been using, the students and stuff like that, we'll learn about you know, that part of the ecosystem. And then we'll learn you know, from my ADT what part of the ecosystem I was using today around frame, so either way. Uh, yeah, so I think it's that will really work well. Um, 
to uh, key things. Um, we didn't talk about strategic ones. Forgotten. Uh, getting technicians in place, getting gravity sketch on board for potential elements mm -hmm. as well it would be great. I don't know that that's possible at the each institution. Some people, yeah, some form of representation there would be really good. In terms of inviting audience, are we able to entice them with that will pay travel expenses, things like that? Um, or is it purely that they're just going to be so interested and just eager to learn? Well, the to learn. <laughs> the the uh, um, the way the funding works is that um, we ha so the Ukrainian colleagues have a budget of up to seven thousand euros, and we have a budget. Each partner has a budget of up to four thousand euros for the event. Now you don't have to spend all that money on on the events. You can use that money for other things, but the understanding is that actually you can you, you should use some of that money on the event itself. So that might be around catering. It may be around uh, uh, paying for speakers, you know, if we want to bring people in. I mean, that this is any kind of multiplier, but not necessarily specific to us. Um, but if, you know, if, I don't know, say you wanted to bring in all, uh, a, a big cohort of students from the local uh, art college, you can pay for the transport for them to all come in. You know, that, that kind of thing. So that, that money is at your discretion. It should be... Uh, um, uh, it should be spent on the project in some way. Um, although I think actually, if you don't spend it, it will just sit in your organizational support. Um, so, you know, they're, they're, the, the multiplier events are a useful way of being able to uh, get that little bit of extra money that in all the other budget lines is not there because all the other budget lines are so tight and you know they never quite cover everything anyway. But the multiplier event is one where actually it's, it's pretty generous in terms of the funding. Um, but so, but I think it's it's for each partner to think locally about how they want to fund um, the event itself um, and what you know what what kind of costs there may be. So, for example, another thing, you might decide I don't want we we want to hold it somewhere outside of our institution. We want to hold it in a uh, 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 another venue, and therefore there may be a cost for that. There may be an AV cost and so on. But so the money is there. Um, but but you're absolutely right, Jenny. You, we want to we want to draw people in, and, and obviously part of that will be about promoting, you know, enticing them in because of the the project and what it does. But um, if 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 uh, um, if you want to be able to provide a little bit of uh, expenses for um, attendees, or indeed um, uh, provide some really nice catering or or, or whatever, then um, then that can be. That could be done in the budget. So thinking about, particularly for academics, how forward planning, how much forward planning is involved, like a hold the date, kind of going out ASAP to lots of people would be really useful. Yes, yeah. that's why. That's why, and that date is fixed. That date is not going to change. So yeah. Um, so everybody should put that in their diaries. Okay. Yep. I realise it's two minutes to four and you've had a long day, um, but any any other final comments? Okay, what I, what um, just to give you the sort of timeline now. Um, so so you now know the the dates. Um, each partner will be you know responsible for for developing this uh, um, you know managing their event. The the kind of project leads in each partner um, uh, will be, you know, we will be meeting as a group like we do uh, with project meetings. Um, so we will be uh, um, keeping the momentum up there. But you should, the case study colleagues here, you should be thinking about, well, what is it that I'd like to, you know, how would I like to pitch what I do? How would I, uh, um, what's the space that I want to show? What are the kind of questions or uh, um, uh, tasks or you know whatever that I want the the uh, uh, um, attendees to uh, experience, and if you have any other ideas, kind of feed that to your your, your kind of project lead in your own institution. Um, just to remind you, the, um, the the Polish training session, we will spend a bit of time probably on the final day. Um, 
going through the multiple prior events and you know maybe doing some dress rehearsals but but really sort of working through that will give us that'll be probably about a month before the uh, um the event itself so um so there will be there will be we will return to this um and you'll be discussing it locally but also we will gather together again uh and and do some kind of planning as well um so so if you have any thoughts in the meantime please let your project lead know at your institution um, or indeed drop uh, drop myself and the Accelerate team at Bar Spire a note as well. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yeah, what is the Polish training? Polish training is, the date for that is April, isn't it? The 17th, 18th, 19th? Um, so uh, it's... Uh, so what we've suggested is um, it would be, uh, yeah, the 17th, 18th and 19th of April. Um, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, and um, the Thursday will be a project meeting, which case study colleagues won't need to be there. But it means that actually there will be, um, we're going to have the project leads there on the Wednesday as well, so be, so that's why I'm thinking that we do the multiplier event then because that would be a really good uh, um, opportunity to get everybody together. Um, we will send out the dates by email because that was only agreed on Monday. We will send out all the, the, oh, the, the well, next week. No, 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 no. Okay. That makes yeah. me feel better. <laughs> no, no, no. Nobody's missed an email. Don't worry. It was uh, it was literally discussed uh, uh, forty eight hours ago. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 never, never. Key people, key people. Is that it, so? Is everyone happy? Um, happy people hearing. Okay, good, good. I'm glad. Is is tonight your um, painting done, Leary Red, or is that tomorrow night? Okay. Blueberry, uh, light blue. Ah. <laughs> okay. But that is actually. You see, you, 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 we know you painted it red the other night, so we're just, we're just going for light blue. <laughs> well, that was just the financial controller's credit card, I think. But, um, uh, so, but uh, um, well, it, yeah, I hope I um, hope you have. We a, haven't given them the bad news yet. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I hope I hope it's been going well. I hope tomorrow goes well. And uh, um, uh, yeah, have a, have a good evening all. And uh, I wish I were there. <laughs> likewise, likewise. Listen, mind right. yourself. Take it easy. Take care. Bye, bye, everyone. Thanks. See you, Alexander. Take care. Yeah. yeah.